Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. It seems like Russia continued to lose their ships, at least we have the report from the Ukrainian media sources based on their sources in Ukrainian military intelligence that one of the Russian ships, Serpuhov, got fired in Kaliningrad city port of the Russian Federation. As Ukrainian intelligence says, it was done for purpose by some of the agents on board. The fire was extinguished but the ship lost critical equipment. The Ukrainian intelligence shares this image on their media sources, saying that the ship lost some of the automatic systems, as well as a very critical equipment for its surveillance. They also share this video how the fire started. Well, maybe it was like that if Ukrainian officials are showing some sort of the videos about it. So the ship is basically a corvette type able to carry some of the missiles. It also has a huge gun in the front. Russia has many of those. Here Serpikov is commissioned for the Russian army in 2015. The base for it is Port Kaliningrad in the Baltic Sea. Hopefully it will not be operatable for a very long time. Obviously the main targets for Ukraine should be in the Black Sea because the Baltic Sea is really far away, but every damage to the Russian Navy or their military is very important for Ukraine. Nevertheless, as usual, I'm still waiting for the confirmation images or the satellite photos from the place because it's been reported many times before that Russia lost many of their ships. However, later on we understood that that information wasn't really correct as it happened with attack on Sebastopol ports or with a drone attack on the Russian military airfields which happened a few days ago. However, with military airfields we are still out of the satellite images from two of those. So yeah, hopefully this information is correct. One more mishap with a Russian ship, this time it is the icebreaker. It was located in a maintenance dock, then the fire in the ship just broke out. One of the persons lost his life on board because of this accident, and some of the injured personnel were delivered to hospitals. It is not the first time that Russia is losing their ships in their maintenance docks. Just recall what happened to the only air carrier of the Russian army. Yeah, it was almost destroyed by two of the fires in the maintenance dock. Here is the similar scenario, so they are neglecting safety measures. Yeah, I know it's an old joke, but here they definitely smoked at the wrong place. You may say that Dennis, it's just a civilian Russian ship, so why should we be happy about it? Guys, it's not the ordinary ship, it's the icebreaker. And you see that sign here? Rosneft. So this ship is used to give the way to the Russian oil platforms in the Arctic Ocean. It does what it was built for, making a line, and it is also used to maintain those platforms. Now Russia lost this capability at least for one ship, for extended period of time. Also during the possible future conflicts, this ship could be used to create the way for the Russian Navy, again because it is the icebreaker. But still Russia has many of the icebreakers, however this particular unit was quite unique. Well it is quite unique, I think that Russia will repair it, but they have to spend years now to make it possible. The name of the icebreaker ship is Catherine the Great and it is really a huge ship. Yeah, the image quality is not that great, but here you may spot a person, so the height of a person compared to the ship, definitely big one. Some towns, villages and cities of Russia continue to go down below the war level. We are speaking about mostly the city of Orsk, which is located just at the border with Kazakhstan. As you can see, we have even Orsk floods in Google Map. So if you click on it, you may find some of the reference to the news and other sources about this stuff. So what happened there? There is the dam, probably it's over here, which just crushed. As Russia reports, they spent 1 billion rubles, it's still quite a lot, to repair this dam not long time ago, but somehow it crushed under the water pressure. Russian officials say that all of that is because of mice, which went into the construction of the dam and somehow destroyed it, making it more weak. Well, actually Russian officials should have been prepared for this scenario, because every spring water comes from the Ural mountains through the Ural river, over here to Orsk and also to Orenburg. Now it's the big threat for this Russian city, it's a very big city even compared to Orsk, the capital city of the Orenburg Oblast. Also war went to the Kazakhstan as well, Russia helped to do it according to the local reports, Russia opened the gates of the other dam to make water to go to the other country rather than to go to Orenburg, so it's the special water operation by Russians. 
So all of this area in this place is flooded. The evacuation wasn't really organized properly. If you want to see the proofs, you need to check out my Telegram channel because some certain videos I'm unable to publish on this platform. Putin didn't go to the place. He doesn't want to be bothered with this not a really complicated issue for him personally. But he sent the minister of the emergency situations. Yes, Russia has the minister of that stuff. And here you can see they use some sort of the amphibious trike. They all were in uniform and they're going to see how locals are suffering on their boats. And yeah, that's what they do. That's how they help. They should have used this vehicle for evacuation purposes, not for showing up in a place. But what can we say? Russia. One billion rubles were stolen during the repair of the dam, but mice are guilty. By the way, locals complained about the poor infrastructure of the Orsk city well before two years ago, but now I think that they should have no complaints because basically there is no infrastructure left. All right, this video was filmed by Russians. We have tons of the watermarks. Sorry guys about it, but anyways, we can spot the Ukrainian Gur helicopter. The helicopter type is UH-60 Black Hawk, and we can see that the special forces landed on the ground. It happened in Belgorod Oblast. Probably those are the Russian opposition forces, so two helicopters were used for this mission. Very capable helicopters. I have some of the subscribers who used to fly those in the United States Army. Dave, hello, hopefully you're watching me right now. Yeah guys, sorry again, we have tons of the watermarks. This video was filmed from inside of that helicopter during performing the mission on the Russian territory. And later on, our guys, or maybe the Russian opposition forces, went to the local villages. The precise location is a Kozinka village. By the way, today Russian opposition forces announced that they would withdraw their forces from the Russian territory for some certain time. They are still out of the resources to continue their operations expanding the bridgeheads. But sometimes they distract the Russian army helping Ukraine. Russia recently started to lose many of the oil refineries. Also, one more oil refinery near the city Orsk was forced to shut down its operation because of the flooding. That is why Russia is now looking for alternatives to have the fuel supplies into their country, for example, from Kazakhstan. Russia seeks gasoline from Kazakhstan in case of shortages. Sources say that they want to get around 100,000 tons of gasoline. Well, Kazakhstan has now kind of the friendly relations with Russia, I would say, unfortunately, so I do not exclude that this deal is valid. But there is a big question whether this deal goes under the international sanctions. So in this case, Kazakhstan might suffer. So I won't say that it's 100% that this deal will be successful for Russia in the future. A short break, my friends. If you want to support the job that I do on YouTube, please subscribe for my Patreon page. You may find it in the video description below or just scan the QR code available on the screen. Thank you so much for your kind support. You make my daily job possible because recently most of my videos were restricted by this platform. So guys, now let's go to the front lines update. For today we have many of the changes, unfortunately not in favor of Ukraine. We may go to Bohdanovka and there Russia advanced towards this river. This is the Bakhmut area by the way, this is the Bakhmut city. So Russia went there, it was yesterday and it is today. They took this field and went crossing this small road. So they had this assault vector towards the Chasif Yar and now they have one more possible vector through this forest towards the Chasif Yar from this area or they may advance to this part of the city from the north. Plus Russians continue to use their aviation bombs to target Chasif Yar and nearby settlements. Also the situation is not good on the south from the Chasif Yar. There Russia already crossed this river and probably they will have the third advancing vector. So totally one, two and three. Also, they might try to go from Ivanovske. Not a good situation really for Ukrainian army in Chasev Yar. Russia advances quite fast in this region. Russia has crazily modernized the drone protection for their tanks, so I would call it Hunger Tank. Yeah, this thing was spotted on the front lines. We have the video from the Russian maintenance facility of how they made it. I believe that on the front over here, there is the electronic Waffe installed under this fairing, which is used for the tracks. It is transparent for the radio signals, so I think 
they installed the anti-drone systems or drone jammers in the front and definitely it is a tank hangar still it is vulnerable i would say from those kind of the perspectives but the front armor of the tank is usually very robust hard to penetrate but still on the aft part drones can make it to the engine compartment and to the aft part of the turret but you need to be a really skilled pilot to do it and also there could be some of the signal problems while attempting this maneuver very close to the ground and especially with the drone jammers installed in the tank the tank was already used in the battlefield you may see this picture it goes right in the front and the rest of the armored vehicles just went behind it Unfortunately, the group of the tanks made it through this heavy artillery fire. Ukrainian artillery was used a lot in this case, even you can see cluster munition, but it didn't help. The armored vehicles landing their infantry near Ukrainian positions and went back, I would say, intact mostly. Maybe the Russian anti-drone jammers really work, because the drones weren't able to hit those targets. The problem for Russia with this construction that they can barely move the turret just in the front, that's it. But still, as you can see, they performed a successful mission for them. What else we have for today? Noah Mihalovka, Russia took a couple of the quartals from what I can see, so it was yesterday and it is today. They are taking this town little by little. The Deep State military map reports that there is fighting continues in Robotin, south of Novokalinova, Peromarska and Krasnohorivka, but without dramatic changes on the map. The good thing that Russians slowed down in Avdivka direction, because their attacks were ambushed by Ukrainian FPVs and artillery. We have the confirmation that Russia lost at least 95 of the vehicle units in this particular area for the last week. They simply do not have more units to continue those suicide missions. The last night Ukraine was quite successful in targeting the Russian T-90 tank. So yes, our FPV drones are equipped with thermal cameras, some of the modifications of those. And this is the morning picture of the tank. You can see the turret is separated. It was a big kaput or kaboom of the tank. There is one more direction where Russian attacks were totally repelled. It is in Terny, Liman region. So this is the Russian convoy before. This is the Russian convoy during the attack. And this is after we have tons of the images of the Russian vehicles just completely destroyed on the front lines. But they continue to go and go as zombies. Ukraine also continued to operate with HIMARS systems. This gas station was used by Russia, you can see those military vehicles just staying over there, and it was targeted by HIMARS. As reported, it happened in Veliki Kapani village in Kherson Oblast. Alright, yesterday we discussed the attitude of Donald Trump and his peace plan for Ukraine and Russia. Well, today the team of the Trump dismissed the information from the Washington Post, which said that Trump wants to sell some of the territories to the Russian Federation for peace. Trump's advisor Jason Miller said that all of that are the fake news from the Washington Post, they're just making it up. President Trump is the only one talking about stopping the killing, Joe Biden is talking about more killings. This is the quote from the Trump's team, but you know I never trust politicians than they say their statements especially those kind of the politicians as Donald Trump. In March of 2023, so more than a year ago, Trump already stated in front of the cameras that he would agree to trade some Ukrainian territories for peace agreements with Russia. However, later on he changed that rhetoric because it is not very popular even in the United States of America. What I know for sure that if Trump becomes a new United States president, it would bring lots of the uncertainty, not just to the United States, but also to the world. And Ukraine has high chances to lose all of the military support from the United States. That is why I'm not pro-Trump in my rhetorics. President Zelensky gave the interview to the CNN, where he said openly that without the military support from our key ally, the United States of America, Ukraine would lose this war. But you know, guys, I'm still sure that the United States will support Ukraine with the military help. Yes, with a huge delay, but still, they'll do it. The German source well analyzed the situation with the drone and other munition production in the Russian Federation. They conclude that Russia is very capable in production, especially the Shahid drones. Now they produce more than 30 drones per day. Just to mention this number, 30 drones per day. And in the nearby future, they'll be able to produce 
87 drones per day. Because they have two of the big factories for it, they still receive the spare parts from Iran, but some of those they produce in Russia. Russia plans to make more than 2 million artillery shells this year. Every month, Russia produces 130 long-range missiles plus 100 short-range missiles. About the tanks, the situation is not that good for Russia. They start to use all tanks, however, in this case, they would still have enough tanks for next two or three years. 90% of the modern Russian tanks like T-72, B-3 or T-90 have already been destroyed in this war. Great news from Greece, they consider the possibility to transfer to Ukraine at least 32 of the F-16 fighter jets. Greece upgrades its air force, so probably Ukraine will have the chance to obtain some of those planes. My friends, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot. And also, as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky, wherever you are, and have a great time.